The topic which we are going to study speaks of how will ten kings, namely ten kings of ten world regions, together with Beast, which is a pope, destroy the Vatican. The destruction of Vatican will happen in the fifth plague. Why will Vatican get destroyed? Uh, the answer to this question was given by an angel who will execute the judgment upon Vatican in the fifth plague. And uh, he came in a vision to Apostle John to show him the history of the Roman Church and everything that Romans and papacy have done in the past. Explain at the end why would the judgment be executed upon Roman Catholic Church. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, which is judgment upon the Roman Catholic Church, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. In the other words, all the rulers of this world go to Rome, and they go to Vatican, and they ask the Pope for an advice how to create world politics. And we can freely say that Vatican is one of that um, powers that controls the world, and uh, it creates the politics of this world. The Holy Scripture speaks of it. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of this world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The Roman Church enters into illicit relations with the rulers of this world and creates world politics, which God condemns and calls fornication. Jesus said that his kingdom is not of this world, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the vine of her fornication. All inhabitants of this world will be drunk uh, with that teaching or doctrine, or we can say by nice and sweet words which this power will be offering to everyone. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman, Roman church, uh, sit, or which is enthroned, upon papacy, a scarlet colored beast. And a woman, Roman church, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And these are the cardinal robes of red color, as we can see in the picture, purple and scarlet. She is decked with gold. And it is the most wealthy church on this earth, while her believers are moderate men, and while a big part of the world is in famine, she is living deliciously, um, as the Bible says, and they claim that they are followers of Jesus Christ. And it says, precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand. Uh, the cup represents her service to God. When Jesus spoke of his service to God, uh, he lifted up the cup, and the vine which was in it, he said, that was his blood which will be spilled for the sins of this world. Uh, his service to God was pure, it was holy and righteous. But here he says that woman has a cup in her hand, and it is, he says, a full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. A service to God is not in the way God requires it to be, and the way Bible teaches it. But instead, that is a Babylonian religion, uh, which is under the court of Christianity. Everything they do opposes what God demands, and what Bible teaches to be done. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon, or Vatican, the Great, which means it is Babylon under the mask of Christianity. They carry Pope in the procession, same as the Babylonian and Egyptian king and priests were carried. Popes wear a fish hat, same as the Babylonian king and priest was wearing. Uh, we can see it on the pictures here. Popes dress like Babylonian priests and also do not marry like Babylonian priests. That woman is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And in fact, she is a mother to churches that have separated from God and obedience to his law. However, she is also a mother to all secret societies and organizations which Jesuits established to serve her interests. 
On the next picture we have symbols which are used by many secret societies and which were established by Jesuits in order to fulfill the work um, to their utilizers. In the meanwhile, uh, Vatican would stand aside waiting for the work to be done and the whole world to worship Pope. On these pictures uh, there is a compass divider and protractor symbols, all-seeing eye, snake and many more which point to Lucifer. And there is also an owl which can see in the dark and it is a symbol of secret and dark works which happen behind the scene. We must consider those churches that adhere to her teachings and who follow her example as her daughters. And I saw the woman, Roman church, drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with a great admiration. Disciple John, who lived in the first century, uh, he had received a vision from an angel and an explanation about uh, what this church is going to do in the future. And he was in a great wonderment. Because the church that says for itself to be a Christian church, it tends to be the one who persecutes the Christians. And it says that she drank so much of the blood that she became drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And John was very surprised. And he says there is evidence that during the Dark Ages about 68 million Christians were killed by the Roman Church. On the next picture, there are different ways Spanish Inquisition used to torture people who were not like-minded. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, which is Roman Church, and of the beast, papacy, or pope, that carried her. Uh, which had the seven heads and ten horns. <laughs> the beast papacy that thou sowest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. So what does that mean that the beast was and then is not? When it says the beast was, it means the papacy was persecuting. When it says and is not, that does not mean papacy doesn't exist. Uh, the system still exists, uh, however it doesn't have power to persecute people and so it is not bloodthirsty, which makes it to be basically not beast. And here we can see two periods when will papacy persecute. The first period was prophesied in Bible. Uh, there are four verses from the book of Daniel and book of Revelation. And that was a period which lasted for um, 1,260 years, starting in 538 AD until uh, 1798 AD. And at this point, a deadly wound uh, was made to the papacy and it lost its power. So today, it is not a beast, uh, namely, doesn't persecute. However, his deadly wound is being healed and slowly it is gaining the power over this world again. And with the national Sunday law in the USA uh, and later in the other countries, uh, the power will be given back to papacy and it will start to persecute again. And how he says here, it will again become a beast. And this time it is going to last for 1260 days. And this confirms that text from Daniel 12 and Revelation 11. Uh, then in the fifth plague, the seat of the beast will be completely destroyed. In Revelation he says, And they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the earth, when they behold the beast, papacy, that was, namely it was persecuting, and is not, which means beast is not anymore, it's not persecuting again. And yet is, it will come again to persecute. And as the verse from the Revelation says at the end, it will go into perdition. Here uh, we clearly see uh, these two periods of 1260 years and 1260 days. The second period will start with, with the Sunday law, and it will end with the fifth plague, indeed with the plague which we are studying today. 
and here is the mind who has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman, or this church, sitteth. And the city upon the seven mountains, or hills, is Rome, and this church uh, has its chambers, as other translations say, in the city which is upon the seven mountains, and it is thought of Vatican, namely Rome. It is very important to mention that the Bible says uh, it is a Babylon, Babylonian religion, but under the mask of Christianity. The word uh, Vatican is made out of two words, Vatis and Canis, which both mean divine snake. The book of Revelation is giving us an answer, uh, who is that divine snake? And let's read now. And the great dragon, or winged dragon, was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Uh, the great dragon, or winged dragon, or old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, is being cast down to the earth together with one third of all the angels, and these are many, many millions of angels, and today they make war in the way to infiltrate into many different churches and denominations. Uh, they inspire men to serve them and to be in rebellion against the real, true and living God. Papal crest, uh, the left image, depicts this divine winged serpent or dragon. A winged dragon is shown on the floor in a Catholic church. It was once a symbol of pagan Rome and the papacy took it over for itself. Here we see a winged dragon on multiple places. There is dragon on the fountain, then on the iron gate, then in the church of St. Peter on the floor and on the wall, and we see him even on the fountain, uh, literally on every place around. On the next picture we have a man-goat who is also a symbol of Satan. In Bible a goat often describes Satan, namely Lucifer. Verse from Revelation says, Babylon or Vatican, the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every false spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. In the above verse, uh, God emphasizes three times that the Vatican is a demonic place and dwelling habitation of fallen angels. Antichrist means one who is against Christ, but also one who is in the place of Christ or instead of Christ. The Antichrist is the one who will emerge as the leader of Christians, but also as the leader of all world religions. At the time of a great final crisis, he will be offering a solution for the salvation of the world. His wrong solution will separate people from the true God and connect with fallen angels which will bring to the world to the judgment. In the following photos, we are going to see how everything in Vatican is directed towards worshipping the serpent or a winged dragon representing Satan or Lucifer. The following photo shows a building where Pope holds meetings and conferences. The building inside out has a shape of a snake head. The roof is not flat but slightly wavy and shaped like a snake. On each side wall there is a single window made in the form of a snake eye, while the entrance is made in a form of a snake mouth with pointed teeth. The photo shows the Pope as well as a large crowd of people attending these meetings. The inside of the building is also made in a form of a snake head, with two eyes on the side and a ceiling in the form of snake's textures. The mouth with pointed teeth is in the front, where also is a puppet from where they speak. From the puppet um, there is a path that resembles the tongue of a snake. We see snake eyes, teeth and snake tongue. The snake's tongue shows the direction from the puppet towards the congregation from where Lucifer's false teachings are placed. There is a special sculpture in the mouth of the snake, on which is the central figure, the look of Jesus Christ. However, this character is also made that 
his hair goes to the side and forms a special figure. When we take a closer look, we can see the shape of a snake, or lizard, or a dragon head. All these are the symbols of a fallen angel, Lucifer, or Satan. Which means that behind this Jesus lies Lucifer himself. The Bible warns us that in the final act of the great deception, Lucifer will come as Jesus Christ and will deceive a huge number of humanity through this institution. It's all in the sign of a snake. Those who serve Lucifer, the old serpent, must publicly admit that they worship him and so that he can give the power and rule over them. Now we are going to hear a short video where a Catholic priest on a Sunday Mass sings a song in a Latin language with, which glorifies Lucifer. Flama seius, Lucifer matutinus inveniat, Ive in quam Lucifer quinescito casum, Christus filius tus, qui regressus ab inferis, humano generis erenus iluxit, et tecum vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. While the priest is singing, he is saying these words. With its flame, O Lucifer, rising early, he finds a man, I say, O Lucifer, who doesn't know, Christ, your son. The Bible teaches us that God, Heavenly Father, brought forth or beget Jesus Christ, and that he is the Father's son. However, here in the song it is said that Lucifer is the father of Christ, and Christ his son. In other words, Lucifer is worshipped here as God. And then he says, Who came back from the dead, and shed his peaceful light to the human race, and is alive and reigns forever and ever. And at the end everyone says, Amen. Which means, let it be so. And we see that people are unaware of what is going on, who is being worshipped, to who the song is being sung. But if we are a little careful, we can see in which direction it is all going. The devil horns are the sign that means we love you, Satan. In the following photo, we have a Satanist behind whose back is a pentagram or inverted star, which is a symbol of the goat, namely Lucifer. The two prongs above symbolize the goat's horns, the two prongs on the side's ears, while the lower prong symbolizes goat's beard. And now we see Satan is facing the invert star or pentagram, showing the sign that means we love you Satan, while worshipping the symbol of this goat. A goat, the symbol of Satan, was the central figure in the play that took place during the opening of the tunnel in Switzerland. Sign 666 denoting the number of a man and the number of the beast. Pope Francis is showing the sign 666 while saying the name of God, in desire to show which God he serves. And then we see a half man, half goat, showing the sign with his fingers, and it is the sign also shown by popes. The Antichrist greets the devil with the horns in Philippines. Here we have multiple pictures where they show devil horns, which also mean we love you, Satan. The inverted cross is used by Satanists, but also popes. And um, we can see it in the church, uh, then on the dress, then on the chairs, it's everywhere. It's all in the sign of sun worship. Lucifer or Satan represents himself as a sun god. The biblical god is Father. The scripture says, For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in the earth, as there be gods many, and lords many, 
But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. When disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray to God, what did Jesus say? He said these words, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And he said, This is how you ought to pray to God. However, the enemy introduced a pagan concept of believing in the Trinity. And when it is mentioned that there are three, in fact three gods, then it is said to be three in one God. Just as we have three fingers by one hand, for instance. So, these three are one God. However, this is a pagan concept which Satan prepared for easy conversion into Christianity. And what is it about? Pagans believed in the three stages of the sun as the three manifestations of the supreme deity. The first stage is sunrise, the second is zenith or noon, and the third is sunset. It became like a three in one god or triune god. One god, sun, in three ways. So we don't have three suns, but one, just in three different ways. Each of the sun manifestations, sunrise, noon and sunset, are called a special deity name in both Babylon and Egypt. In order to present one god, the sun, properly, they had to merge three phases of sun into one. Thus the following picture was obtained. And this is the symbol of the Trinity which is used today in Christianity. This is a picture of the God they believed and they worshipped. Sun God or three in one God, triune God. The picture of the Sun God can be simplified and shown in different ways as in the following image. Here we have five and there are more of these symbols where this can be represented in different ways the stream god or sun god. Three phases of the sun god. This symbol is known as triquetra. In the left bottom corner is one of the most common symbols used to show or present that triune god or three in one god or the trinity. And that was in fact a concept of worshipping this pagan sun god. We see here cups used by witches and satanists in their rituals. They show the Freon God, which is a symbol of the Trinity. So this is a God worshipped by witches and satanists. On them we see symbols of Sun God, we see triple six, we see Satan and all together bearing the name Triquetra. Here is a symbol on the witch cloak, just as we saw it before. However, Triquetra is found on Pope's hat too. What is the connection between which cloak Triquetra and Pope's hat Triquetra? It is a pagan symbol that represents the sun god, three in one, or triune god, which is not the god of the Holy Bible. We see here how the symbol has found a way to get to the Bible where it does not belong at all. When you read the back of the Bible that contains the Triquetra sign, you will find an explanation that is an ancient symbol of the Trinity. Triun Sun God is the symbol of devil worship. And unfortunately the same symbol is today used in Christianity to describe the Trinity and it can be found in, in many churches as carved symbol on the windows, doors, benches and so on. Sunday, in many languages, such as English, German, etc., etc., in its name has the Day of the Sun, or a day dedicated to Sun God or to this Trinity God. The Vatican obelisk is a symbol that directs the view upwards and shows that the Sun God is the object of worship. Then we have a snake on the cross. Uh, we know who does the snake reflects. Then in Time magazine, title says the future of the medicine. And what is the future of the medicine? The goal is to combine or connect the DNA of humans with the DNA of fallen angels so that the men can become immortal, same as the angels are, eternal. However, that is the greatest deception which fallen angels 
offer to men and unfortunately a good number of human population will be deceived and they will unfortunately accept this fraud. Lucifer, in a form of a winged serpent, deceived Eve back in paradise, lying to her saying if she took the forbidden fruit and disobeyed God, she would become like gods, namely disobedient fallen angels. Fallen angels present themselves to men as gods or supernatural beings and they demand obedience and worship which only belong to God alone. This lie that people will become gods and that Lucifer will give them immortality he repeats even today. His followers are delighted with this idea. God will allow laws to be proclaimed that will force all people to worship the Pope, his Sunday and to receive the mark on their right hand or their forehead. Lucifer, the winged serpent, wants to stand at the forefront of fallen Christianity and to pull the whole world after himself into defiance and rebellion against the true God. This is to be done by making everyone to bow to the Pope and to the Pope Sunday, the day opposite to the Sabbath, the day of God from the Holy Scriptures. And as a culmination of the apostasy from God, it will also be compelling all men to receive the mark of the beast, and become partakers of the nature of fallen angels. And this is how will fallen angels lie to men. If they accept the mark of the beast, they will say, then everybody who receives will become immortal and eternal. Men who receive the mark will become irredeemably evil, full of hatred towards God, same as fallen angels are. That's why the judgment for them is also a complete destruction as for the fallen angels. The Lord is offering us immortality in a different way, not in the way um, this world does. The Lord is offering us all to worship Him, the Lord of the Sabbath, and to celebrate the biblical Sabbath, or known as Saturday, which is the memory of the Creator and a sign that uh, we know the true biblical God. God desires to write His commandments in our hearts. The Lord desires us all to be born again of Christ, uh, the second Adam, and to be partakers of His divine nature, uh, which is receiving the Christ Spirit, and by that Christ's thoughts and feelings in our life. Thus we become new humanity created in the image of the true God and people who will live forever. And what is the right solution for immortality? Now we are receiving the Spirit of Christ, and at the second coming of Christ we will receive the glorified body of Christ. And this is how we are becoming that new humanity or immortal humanity. In Philippians it says that Christ during his second coming shall change our wild body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And this is the solution for immortality which is offered by God. All people will be forced to bring final decisions. The Antichrist, namely the beast, will threaten with death, but God will threaten with two deaths. Everybody will have to choose whether to worship God or man. Uh, here on the picture we have the outpouring of the seventh plague. First and the fifth plague will hit Vatican. Vatican is the only one who will receive double, or two plagues, it says in Revelation. Today uh, we are studying the fifth plague when the seat of the beast will get destroyed and when the time span of 1260 days will come to an end. Revelation 17 verse 12 says, And the ten horns that thou sowest are the ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour, which is fifteen days, with a beast or pope. Who are the ten kings? The Club of Rome was founded in 1968 to address global political and economic issues. Ten kingdoms or ten economically political regions have been proposed by the Club of Rome and accepted by United Nations. The official name for these ten regions in the Club of Rome and United Nations is the Ten Kingdoms. 
At the request of Bilderberg Club, on 13th 9, 1973, the Club of Rome produced an accurate map of the Ten Kingdoms. Uh, it is shown here on the silver coin. The aim of establishing the Ten Kingdoms is to reduce the number of world currencies to ten and to introduce a cashless payment system. In 2010, at the request of Bilderberg Club, the Club of Rome named all ten kings of the world regions, but for security reasons, the list of named sovereigns has not yet been published. And we can see how everything goes according to the Book of Revelation. Right on the silver coin, region number one is the Great Israel, with the capital of the world, Jerusalem. From there, Satan, the winged dragon, wants to rule the whole world from the earthly Solomon's temple through his pope. For the ten kings it is said, These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast or pope. In the other words, these ten regions and ten kings will pronounce the pope for the supreme king, who will reign above all. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb is Jesus, and the lamb shall overcome them. Why? For he is the Lord of the lords and kings of kings, and they that are with him, who are with Christ, they are called and chosen and faithful, and they will triumph in this last and great battle at the end. And then the text says further, The ten kings who will give the power and strength at the Pope, he says, The ten horns, the kings, which thou sowest upon the beast of Pope, these shall hate the whole Roman church, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. We impose the question here now, why would the Pope participate in incineration and destruction of Vatican? If we know who is behind all this, that serpent, that winged dragon, and how much Satan of, or Lucifer hates everything that is Christian and reminiscent of Christ, then we know how they're actually going to do this. He uses Christianity only to the extent of deceiving and destroying everything or everyone. Because he knows that Christianity is a true religion and he knows that it will attract many. And now he is using Christianity to deceive and destroy people and the Christianity at the end itself. And finally, in the sixth plague uh, and until the seventh plague, he will establish the pure religion of Lucifer. Um, now let's see uh, how they will do that, the ten kings and the beast, and how they will destroy Vatican. This is described in the fifth cup and the fifth trumpet, for we know that trumpets and plagues are twofold view. Now we are going to read the fifth cup and fifth trumpet and we will receive the answer. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. Now we impose the question here, why is there going to be darkness over Vatican? And they know their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their souls, and repented not of their deeds. We see that the inhabitants of Vatican will receive painful souls in the first plague, but now they will increase more. From the fifth plague they will, they will increase, but they will receive the double measure. And the ten horns, or ten kings, which thou sowest upon the beast, Pope, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Let us see the explanation now. Why is darkness going to be over Vatican? And how will these ten kings and the beast burn Vatican with fire? And we get the response in the fifth trumpet. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. The key here is the ability to penetrate deep into the earth and open it. And then it says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. In the other words, uh, this is most likely to be an atomic bomb that will be fired and that will penetrate deep into the earth to open it or to unlock the earth. 
and as he says here, there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened. And when the sun and the sky uh, get darkened, there will be darkness over the throne of the beast, as we previously read in the fifth cup. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Interestingly, this radiation will spread from this to say atomic bomb, but it will not harm grass, green or wood. And what does this represent? Here is the Bible giving us the answer. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thy offspring as the grass of the earth. As for a man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourished. We can see here who is represented with grass. And what is a green thing? Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. And let us now see what a tree represents. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. We see that through the image of grass, greens, and trees, uh, people are presented who serve God, in whom the Spirit of God is, and who refreshes them and gives them the life. All the air of God that are sealed by Holy Spirit, or Christ Spirit, will be protected in the time of seven plagues, from the youngest grass to the oldest tree, regardless of their spiritual maturity. Then we read the same text again. And it was commanded them that the radiation should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And we see that God will make a distinct difference between his people who serve him and the people who do not serve him, who worship the beast and his image and receive the mark. So the judgment will affect only those who do not possess the seal of God. The people of God will be sealed at this point with the Holy Spirit. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. The torment will start with the first plague, and then those souls will become stronger and stronger by double in the fifth plague, and they shall agonize until the seventh plague, which is the second coming of Christ. And at this point, their torments would come to an end by the glorious coming of Christ. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strike at a man. And in these pictures we can see uh, what it looks like when a scorpion bites a man, how it breaks down the meat and how extremely painful and difficult these sores um, are, they are. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. Now, um, why wouldn't they find death? It is because they exchanged their DNA with the DNA of fallen angels. They fortified their DNA. Their immune system is way much stronger and the lifespan has increased so much. And then happens what he says here. Then shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and he says death shall flee from them. And this will prove to be a great curse for unrepentant and for those who worship the beast, his image and receive the mark. So that the second coming, really, the second coming of Christ will be a work of a mercy because um, these uh, sufferings for unrepentant will be shortened and that no man no longer live in this misery. And the shapes of the locusts were unto the horses prepared unto the battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. 
and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the so sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, and who is that king? Is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. In Hebrew language Abaddon and in Greek language Apollyon means destroyer or the one who is destroying. And that king of the bottomless pit or Abbas is Lucifer. He is their king. And he leads all the wars and battles, and God allows and controls to show how great the sin is, and that the destruction of sin at the end is really justified by God, and that all the inhabitants of the sinless worlds will say, Thank you, God, for condemning the sin, for destroying the sin. You are the holy, righteous, and good that you have done it. And after these things I saw another angel came down from heaven, having the great power, and the earth was lightened by his glory. This is the chapter of 18, Revelation, which describes in detail the destruction of Vatican. I'm going to read now. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, uh, Just prior to the destruction of Vatican, when nearly everybody agreed with Vatican, all churches, all countries and states, he says, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every false spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the vine of the wrath, or her teachings, of her fornication. And unfortunately, all nations will be delighted by these ideas. Wine of wrath represents the false teachings of Babylonian church. She has given to the world a belief of false day of rest, which is Sunday, instead of the Sabbath from the four commandments of God, the Trinity instead of the Heavenly Father, and with her teaching of natural soul immortality, she is continuously repeating the lie which Satan spoke to Eve back in the Garden of Eden, saying, Ye shall not surely die. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are vexed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Here it does not say her plague, but actually says her plagues, which is two plagues Vatican will receive by double. And God calls honest people out from all churches everywhere because all churches will unite under the roof of Vatican. God calls all members of, of other organizations to get out of this system and God addressed them with my people. And why does that? That they be not partakers of her sins and that they receive not of her plagues. God's people will recognize this message sent from him and will come out. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. In the other words, God is merciful and he was suffering it and suffering. However, this is a drop that overflows the cup. When will the sins of Babylon reach unto heaven? When human laws become superior than God's law, and when they make God's law void. The Sunday law will repress and overthrow the Sabbath of the Lord. Men will say that the law of God is not valid anymore, and that everyone will must obey the laws of men which are contrary to the law of God. And this is the moment when the sins of Babylon reach heaven and when the cup of wickedness and iniquity is overflowed. Babylon claims that salvation is only in him and that everyone should ecumenically unite with him and obey him in order to be saved. Then the statement in foreign newspapers which says that God is Catholic 
Then another statement which says Sundays must be a day of rest dedicated to God, family Pope says, and a person who violates the sanctity of Sundays to be punished as a heretic. All these are the sins which reach unto heaven, and now the last call is sent out while the mercy time is still open. To come out of here and separate from this group of people while this system will receive the first plague and later the fifth plague as well, when the seat of the beast, Vatican, will come to its end. Just as the Lord brought the sons of Israel out of Egypt to be able to celebrate his Sabbath, so he calls a people today to come out of Babylon, not to worship Pope and his Sunday. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering unto him, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that son of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, a man who will abolish the law of God, and exalt his own above God's, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. How popes present themselves to be God? Here we got some of their statements. For instance, Pope Leo the Thirteenth. We take the place of God Almighty on this earth. Then, on June twentieth, eighteen ninety-four, Pope Leo the Thirteenth declared for himself, "We rule over the earth instead of the Almighty God." Pope Boniface the Eighth says in his Bull Unum Sanctum, in thirteen o two. I have the authority of the emperor of the, the emperors. I am all and above all. So God personally and I, the vicar of God, have one purpose, and I am able to do everything God can. Then what can I be but God? And here we heard these statements and these blasphemies, as the Bible calls them. And this is why it, uh, it says that um, he will sit in the church of God as God, and show himself to be God. However, what does the Bible say upon these statements? Seize ye from a man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Today he says the great things, but tomorrow he dies and ends up in the earth, in a grave. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man, whether he be a priest, or a ruler, or a religious leader, and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. What it is saying here is that we must put trust in the Lord. He is the immortal and eternal one. He has the power and strength, but not in men who are mortal. And when shall that wicked be revealed, and that wicked will live all the way until the second coming of Christ, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the work of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So, when we see the great power within Christianity, the great signs and the great wonders, the Bible says it will be, it will be after the work of Satan for many to be deceived. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, why? Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. God has revealed his message of truth. He said, Believe on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, as the scripture says. However, people have no love for the truth. They do not want to receive the truth and ignore the truth to be saved. And then he says, And for this cause God shall send them, or allow, strong delusion. In other words, God will allow Satan to do this because the history of the world has to come to an end. God has given the truth. He has revealed his message of salvation. And then he will allow the enemy to reveal his lies. And he says, They should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Unfortunately, as in the time of Christ, today's truth is unpopular. Today's day of rest, God's day of rest, is very unpopular. 
more appreciated is the day of tradition, the day of the church, the day of man, um, than the day of the living God, our Lord and our Saviour. And further continues chapter 18 of Revelation in verse 6 saying, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. And we see here the double punishment that will come upon Vatican. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit as a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues, first and the fifth plague, come in one day or one year, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for the strong is the Lord God who judged her. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise any more, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls, and fine linen and purple and silk, and scarlet and all dyein wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beast, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and godly, are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her. And we know that the biggest transaction today, the biggest wealth, goes through the Vatican and its bank. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, um, because of their businesses uh, lapsed and saying, Alas, Alas, the great city, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, which is red color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to know, and every shipmaster and the company in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Otherwise, Rome or Vatican was the one who persecuted the people of God from the first to the second coming of Christ. The Romans participated in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Um, during Diocletian's time, there was a great exile for ten years. The pagan Rome does um, go to the papal Rome. And then the Dark Middle Ages persecution after that. Then a short time of mortal wound. And again, as soon as the Vatican gains power, it begins to persecute again. That's why it says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God had avenged you on her. Vatican was judging the people of God, and now God is judging Vatican. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Dust with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians, and of pipers and trumpeters, shall be heard no more all in thee. And no craftsman, of whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. 
and the sound of millstone shall be heard no more or at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by sorceries were all nations deceived, and in hair was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Satan hates everything that resembles Christ or the true Christianity. That is why God will allow Satan to destroy the Vatican, and with him all the other religions that have gathered around him. To establish at the very end the pure Luciferian faith, which is Lucifer and his fallen angels are the good ones and Heavenly Father and the Son and the good angels are the bad guys and those who are evil and so being like that they should be eliminated. This question, if God willing, will be addressed in one of the following topics. Until then, great greetings to all and may the Lord be with you.